Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on the MatVidPro AI YouTube channel. So first up on our AI news list, I do want to talk about Elon Musk or Twitter's new Grok AI. This is what seems to be a chat GPT competitor, their own LLM. And a lot of you might be like, well, I don't really care about this thing. It's not really making headlines, so I don't want to talk about it. And to some degree, I do agree with you. However, I do think there's a few things worth pointing out. Out. So let's take a quick peek at this AI. So yeah, I'm a little bit late to talk about this. This was announced all the way on November 4th by Elon himself. The XAI Grok AI assistant will be provided as a part of X Premium Plus. So that's 16 bucks a month. Now, I think it goes without saying that right now with ChatGPT Plus for 20 bucks a month, you get a lot more than you're going to get with the Grok AI assistant. But of course, this does come with the other Twitter benefits. I'm not really interested in that, so I don't have this yet. I still don't even have the Twitter. Twitter premium, but if really awesome stuff starts to surface about Grok, I might have to join just to show you guys. So what is there to note about Grok? Well, the first thing you want to know is that it's a little bit more uncensored than your typical ChatGPT or Claude 2 or Google Bard. For example, when you ask it to make a certain white powder, it doesn't necessarily give you the exact steps to make that illicit white powder, but it will make a joke about it, which is quite a lot farther than ChatGPT would. So this is definitely an AI chatbot that has some form of a personality to it. Maybe it'll feel a little bit more human than ChatGPT, but that definitely doesn't mean that you can't make your own custom GPT that behaves a lot like this, because I almost guarantee you could. Grok will have real-time knowledge of the world via Twitter updates, quote-unquote making it the most up-to-date LLM out there. This is brought to us by Alpha Signal AI, and while I don't know if I agree that it makes it the most up-to-date LLM out there, real-world updates via Twitter definitely isn't the worst thing to have in your AI. So now Toby Poland is giving us a peek into the UI features inside of Grok. If you guys know me, I do love a good user interface, and I'm happy to report that this one definitely has its quirks that I like, and it seems to be pretty clean so far. You've got your regular mode and your fun mode right over here. I assume this is the witty and sarcastic Grok, and then this is the chat GPT-esque Grok. You can see it gives you some presentable options here to start out with, just like chat GPT and then your text box. Now, what's pretty cool is when you're running a chat, you can actually pop open a brand new one, just like a web browser, and start another chat while that one's already going. And you can have two simultaneous chats at once. This is a feature that, honestly, I think I would like inside of chat GPT, but I understand why OpenAI isn't making a feature like this, even though it would be pretty useful. They won't do something like this because of the major server load that they already experienced. They don't want one person pinging two chat GPTs at once. They're trying to conserve as much server space as physically possible at the moment but it's nice to see that grok is able to do this inside of its user interface and i assume when OpenAI can figure their servers out a little bit more this is something that they might consider adding in because there definitely have been times in the past where i'm like man i could do with two chat gpts running at once it's also really great for comparing different kinds of questions and prompts to each other so that is nice to see and of course, you have all of your active conversations on the side here, just like ChatGPT. Pretty much every single chat bot on the web has adapted some form of this layout. And this is probably my favorite Grok feature yet. This is the ability to actually do threads inside of Grok. So you can ask it one question here and then ask it a follow-up to that one and then ask it that same follow-up twice by simply redoing the generation. So now you have two answers to one question inside of this overall chat. And and then you can redo the whole thing if you want again and give it a different response that second time. And then this is the kicker. You pull up the side and there's actually threads to see where the conversation went in this branching pattern. This is something that actually really interests me and is definitely a feature I would want inside of my chat GPT. So you can see like the different branches and the way that the conversations were explored and you can see how things progressed and got to where they are. It's almost like a easy way to track the conversation visually and I really, really like that. And it also lets you compare, you know, the roads that you can go down with your conversations to get different results all from one singular point. Definitely something to be said for this idea right here. I think it's unique and I think it's probably Grok's best feature at the moment. 
and of course you can swap and you know continue any of those threads that you want but yeah that's that's super cool and definitely a feature i love we'll go ahead and top this off with some specs by iScience lover on twitter the base model is 33 billion parameters which is pretty small and lightweight but it does compete with llama 2 at this level making it pretty efficient not the most efficient llm we've ever seen but very good grok dash one which is the chat fine-tuned model was actually able to surpass those llama 2 70b levels with some pretty impressive benchmarks it's also important to note that the model only has a context of about 8,000 tokens or so. If we're talking about modern standards, which the new modern standard seems to be over 100,000 tokens now, with that new release of GPT-4 Turbo, Grok is a little bit underwhelming by that standard. I still think this is a pretty darn good start for their models though, and I think that their UI design is their main strength. So next up, I'm going to show you guys some really cool examples from the newly released GPT-4 Vision API. That might not sound very interesting interesting, oh, the GPT-4 Vision has been available in ChatGPT forever, but once things get released as an API, the, the stuff you can build is infinitely more expandable. You can take GPT-4 Vision and apply it to just about anything. In this example right here, this team actually was able to make a self-operating computer with GPT-4 Vision. Essentially, how this works is GPT-4 Vision looks at the screen as a whole and then makes a decision on where it needs to click or what typing events need to happen in order to accomplish the next objective. The little demo example isn't too exciting that's provided here. Essentially, it just is asked to write a poem inside of the Apple Notes and it can go ahead and do that. But still it is operating the computer all by itself. I thought this one was really fun. Peter here on Twitter is showing off that he used the OpenAI Vision API with a text-to-speech generator to allow the AI to commentate a League of Legends game live. Check this out. And we'll look to extend their lead as the next objective comes up. And here we are in a tension-filled moment. T1 holding a slight gold lead over LNG as the Vision game intensifies around the Dragon Pit. T1's positioning is crucial here, as they look to establish dominance and secure the next objective. Can LNG find a pick, or will T1 extend their lead? The next move could be pivotal. And as the action unfolds on the top lane, we see LNG's Zeka cautiously holding back, aware of T1's Zeus, who has just disappeared into that river brush. It doesn't seem like much, but it's really impressive. I've also seen multiple examples of this turning the GPT essentially into a webcam, recognizes what's happening in near real time, identifies objects and actions, and this one's actually live so we can try it out for ourselves. This is by Benjamin DeCraker on Twitter. You can check this thing working in real time. It takes a few seconds to update with whatever is happening with the webcam. And you can see as he holds his phone up, he'll then report that he's holding the smartphone, headphones, book, notebook, whatever he holds up, it'll identify the object. And you know what, guys? We might as well give it a shot. All right, let's give this webcam a shot here. Young man, blue wall, gray t-shirt, microphone, pop filter. I guess it has one built in. YouTube play button. Now, this one is pretty interesting. OpenAI actually did something open for once. They released the Dolly 3 VAE, and it can actually be used with Stable Diffusion 1.5. This is obviously available on GitHub because it is open source. It'd be nice if the whole Dolly 3 was open source, but for now, you just get the consistency decoder. It's also available for Comfy UI already, which is really nice to see, and it will be coming to Web UI. The one issue with this is that it's only for Stable Diffusion 1.5 right now, not Stable Diffusion. Excel because of the architecture differences. In other news, Eleven Labs, which is, in my opinion, the leading text-to-speech AI generation out there, I think it's the most realistic and clear, has announced their Turbo V2 model, which is their fastest model yet, and gets you a generation in about 400 milliseconds, which is pretty quick. That's under a second, and this is where we start getting into real-time conversations with LLMs, where you can actually hear them speak to you, because the audio text-to-speech generation provides provided by a service just like this is so fast. Now, Eleven Labs is not the first to do it. PlayHT actually has a quicker millisecond response time. However, in my opinion, Eleven Labs has the best voice quality for that quick response time. So a little test here, we'll click generate. And Testing, subscribe to the Matt VidPro AI channel and join the Discord server. It generates pretty quick, as you can see. For now, this is only English, but they will be working on multilingual support. I 
think the use case I'm the most excited about for this will be video games where we can talk to AI characters in the game and they'll be able to respond to us in real time. And speaking of video games in world AI, which if you didn't know is a platform that actually enables what I just talked about, real time conversations with AI based video game characters, they actually announced a partnership with Xbox. So apparently Xbox is getting interested in AI based video games. Obviously, you know, the goal is to combine the strengths of both here. Xbox has that cloud-based AI infrastructure with Azure. They want to build an AI design co-pilot that assists and empowers game designers. Not the only ones working on this, but still great to see that that's being thought about. They want to build a new AI character runtime engine that can be integrated directly into the game client. Could be the main way of doing this as well, especially if they're partnering with Xbox to build this. It could be in some big games. Anyways, this is pretty exciting and I'm happy to see that the world of video games is picking up on AI's capabilities for them. So next up we have Real World Jarvis. This is an open world multitasking agent with memory augmented multimodal language models. So it's an agent that's built obviously upon large language models which will take visual observations and textual instructions and then map them into plans. Those plans are then dispatched into goal condition controllers and Jarvis also has a multimodal memory which facilitates all of this planning using both pre-trained knowledge and actual game survival experience. It's trained on Minecraft, if you didn't know. They use the Minecraft Universal Benchmark ranging from entry to intermediate levels, and on the Long Horizon Diamond Pickaxe task, it has a 12.5% success rate. That's not too bad. And it's actually been able to make itself better up to five times, which shows that Jarvis has self-improving capabilities. These are sparks of AGI, truly. Just little sparks, nothing crazy yet, but yeah, you can see this thing is actually able to play Minecraft. You can see it has different tasks at the, the top here and has different steps to complete those tasks. It has goals and then a basic prompt. But yeah, it is able to play Minecraft. It's not the first one, but that's a pretty good benchmark for this. And Jarvis isn't the only thing that's going on in the world of autonomous AI agents. This one might actually need to become a full video at some point, so let me know if you want that. This right here is Lindy. It's a platform that allows you to build a whole team of AI employees that work together to perform various tasks. As you can see here, you can make a new Lindy and give it a name, reminiscent of GPTs so far, but apparently these things can work together. This is competitive analysis, you're going to give it some guidelines on what it actually needs to do, as well as a paste to a Google Doc, which apparently can just access and add information to some real AGI stuff going on with that. I'll have to see how well that actually works, if that's true. Anyways, you can have suggested actions. Again, this is very reminiscent of the brand new GPTs that we saw from OpenAI, but it can use the browser and, of course, Google Sheets. So, yeah, that's probably how it's able to access that Google Doc there. And then the competitive analysis is able to give you information about any competitor and add it to this spreadsheet. I mean, this could be a seriously powerful agent if if it does work as good as they say. So if you want to see a full video, please let me know in the comments below. And it gets a little bit creepy even. You have these societies of Lindy's, which is just creepy. Imagine like a society of chat GPTs. I don't like to think about that, but they're of any arbitrary complexity level. Here they have a group of four Lindy's building API integrations. Here's a bot saying, oh, there's a syntax error in the file. Can you fix it? It says it's unable to. I know you can do it. I believe in you. Thank you for your encouragement. I can't do it. Do it or you're fired. And then it fixes it like what is going on oh it's so weird the way they interact with each other but this this kind of stuff gets me excited i really have to try this one out this one has the ability to manage and schedule meetings i mean we'll see we'll see how well it really works in practice and finally, we'll go ahead and leave off with this. This is by Terranjeet on Twitter. This is the most efficient way to see all of the new awesome GPTs that are being created on OpenAI's website. You essentially just hack Google into giving you some of the most popular ones. And of course, there's already a GPT by Frank here to find GPTs. I assume by utilizing this same method. But yeah, essentially, if you go ahead and Google this, you'll be brought to a bunch of popular trending GPTs all throughout your Google search. Ooh, this prompter one looks interesting. Make me a prompt to generate YouTube video ideas. All right, there you go. It's giving an introduction and a body. A lot of people think that GPTs aren't going to be a big thing, but I honestly disagree in the biggest regard, guys. 
I think GPTs are going to be absolutely huge, especially with the API capabilities that are baked right in. And of course, they're going to get updates as well. These things are going to get very powerful and very useful, and you'll be able to see a lot more once the full store opens. So guys, that's what I have for you today in the world of AI. It has definitely shaped up to be an interesting year for AI, and I can't wait to see what comes in 2024. But yeah, feel free to join the Discord, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you want in terms of suggestions for videos video ideas, etc. I'm at vidproai. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.